Hi, this is Sean Darrington, Senior Director of Product Management here at StorageCraft. And today in this how-to video, I wanted to share with you how to do the network profile configurations in OneSafe. Uh, this is with OneSafe uh, 3.1 and later. Uh, OneBlocks has been recently renamed and rebranded to be OneSafe, uh, which is inclusive of not only all the scale storage capabilities that we've had over the years, but now inclusive of also data protection uh, services. So it's really a converged scale-out platform for secondary storage as well as primary. But in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to set up multiple network profiles uh, and enable port groups. This is the advanced configuration that we have now within the 3.1 version. So depending upon which one safe model you have, this is the 5210. There are actually three port groups, uh, two by one gig network ports, two by 10, and then another two by 10. When you enable port groups, you are isolating network traffic to two network interconnects. Uh, in this case, PG0, PG1, or PG2. Now I can define multiple network profiles on different subnets to focus what type of traffic I want to have go over which of those two ports. So in this example, I have my default network, which is this DHCP that's on my corporate network. That's the one I just started up one safe, it got an address, and then I set up the cluster and went from there. I can also have different subnets for like the engineering CAD uh, group that's on this IP address. Uh, this is a one blocks IP address. And I can also give it a virtual IP address for each subnet. Um, you can also have different uh, port groups which have properties of different bond modes and or MTUs uh, and each of them can be unique and there are settings that are specific to each port group. PG0 can have a different active backup and standard MTU. Port group 1 can have round robin and standard MTU. Port, cr port group 2 is like for my VMware data that actually has LACP and jumbo frames. So those things are specific to those port groups. And now across the port groups, I can layer multiple network profiles depending upon my environment. Additionally, you can have a virtual IP address per subnet that is recommended to use with the cluster. You can have up to 25 virtual IP addresses and you can have up to 25 different network profiles. Now each subnet must can only be mapped to one port group. Okay? Um, there are a couple of other things to keep in mind. The default network profile uh, has to remain. You can change this to static uh, if you want to and give it a different IP address than the DHCP server gave it, but you do need a default profile uh, for the port zero, port group zero. You can then create other networks if I want to do this. So I'm going to do just demo network. And this isn't going to be, I'm just making this, um, this one up. I'm going to put this on port group two. So it's going to have an IP address of 172.19.30.3 and and now what's new in 3.1 release is that you can have obviously these multiple network profiles but you can also assign them and change which port group you want to move it to as well as each network profile now has a gateway uh, it doesn't have to have a gateway if it's on a completely closed network for example let's say the vmware data network is simply on my 10 gig closed network uh, i can save that i don't have to have a gateway but you do have that option to add the gateway for each of the network profiles. Additionally, if you're using VLAN taggings like a dot .55 for any of that traffic, you can add that there. Uh, most admins don't use that, but if you do, you can feel free to just edit this and add a dot .55 if you want to. Uh, whatever that may be, you can assign that to the different network profiles that you'd like to. A couple of other things to keep in mind. Um, I mentioned the default network has to be there. You can only have uh, one DHCP address, uh, and that is on um, uh, port group zero. All the others need to be static IP addresses. Uh, you can only have one subnet per port group, so I can't take a uh, .18.50 network and assign it to PG1 and PG2. You have to choose one or the other. Um, the cluster-wide settings uh, are if you use a proxy server, uh, NTP servers and DNS, server, DNS servers, these should match your domain controllers um, and you can have multiple if you do, um, feel free to put them in there. When you add your DNS servers, go ahead and delete the default DNS servers but also delete the default NTP servers because you want to have the OneSafe cluster stay, stay in sync with your Active Directory domain controllers. And after that's done, you can simply hit save uh, and that will save the network profile. Uh, now that I click save, that network configuration and network profiles that I added and edited are now um, set to that OneSafe cluster. Uh, now I'm going to flip over to one system and set the virtual IP addresses. So here's my test environment. Um, this is the same uh, OneSafe 50001 that I was working on. And now here under settings, 
I can assign the virtual IP addresses. Now, I've already put them in here, um, but you can have up to 25, as I mentioned, and they're just comma separated. We recommend that you use a single virtual IP address for each subnet. You can't have multiple virtual IP addresses for a given subnet, but if you have 10 different network profiles, go ahead and create 10 virtual IP addresses, one for each. That's going to insulate you from any changes you scale out and add additional nodes to your cluster. It'll just prevent future work uh, down the road. So with that, I'm just going to exit out of that because I've already entered them, and that's as easy as it is to assign up to 25 different virtual IP addresses to the multiple network profiles that's available with the OneSafe 3.1 release. Thanks for watching, and check out storagecraft.com support for additional how-to videos.